Am I crazy that I play Paw Patrol for my dog every single morning? Every single morning I do it. When I'm down here working, Buxton is upstairs in the living room watching Paw Patrol. He likes it, I swear to you he does. It's been like a two year thing. My parents laugh at me, my girlfriend laughs at me, my friends laugh at me, but it's the honest truth, man. He is like a child. Anyway, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and happy Tuesday. Per your guys' request out of yesterday's video, today I am going to be predicting the stats for the NFL wide receivers for 2023. I do want to say right away, we're going to be doing yards and touchdowns, but I'm going to have to be moving pretty fluent because I got a lot of receivers to go through. And unfortunately, this still is not even all the receivers. Like it's just honestly limitless. Anyway, before we hop into today's video, I got my usual plugs of G Fuel and Prize Picks, where you can use code Wyatt's World to save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products or match up to $100 of your first deposit. But for the heck of it, if you guys like any of the clothes I wear from Waggle Golf, hit the link in my bio and use code Wyatt10. Saves yourself a discount and it's really high quality stuff, man. It's no joke. But now I'm done talking, let's get into the video. <laughs> Alright guys, so here's how we're gonna do this today. Sadly, it is on a tier list, but I tried my best to make it as entertaining as possible. Like I said, not only am I gonna be doing yards, but I'm gonna be giving you touchdown predictions. And I have made this tier list quite extensive. Goes all the way from at the bottom, which is less than 700 yards, all the way to the top, which is 1300 yards plus, and that is God mode. Obviously, anybody can land anywhere in between, so why don't we stop talking and begin with Drake London? My prediction for Drake London this year is 800 receiving yards and 6 receiving touchdowns, somewhere around there. Look, I think Drake London is a great wide receiver, but the fact of the matter is Atlanta drafted B. John Robinson at 7 overall. They've also got Alajire in the backfield. That is two fantastic running backs, kind of hinting at what their game plan is going to be. And on top of that, not only is Desmond, you know, not the best thrower at the moment, but aside from Drake, they've only got Kyle Pitts as their weapons, leading me to believe that throwing really isn't going to be on their agenda. Moving on, we got Chris Olave. <laughs> We're already going God mode because he's hitting 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns. Look, if I got Derek Carr as my leading passer, I got to have something to back that up, and that's going to be Olave being a candidate for Offensive Player of the Year. This is not eye-rolling ridiculous. It might be a little over the top, but if you go and just watch his rookie highlights, I guarantee you'll be convinced that it is entirely possible. Up next, we got Michael Thomas. I got him at about 850 yards, maybe, and five touchdowns. Look, he'll be good enough to make an impact if he's healthy, but that's been his problem. He hasn't been healthy since 2019. Thankfully for the Saints, they've got Kamal. Mara, they've got Rashid Shahid, they've got a bunch of guys who can catch, but if he's healthy, it will help them. Now we got Jamar Chase, 1,200 receiving yards, 10 receiving touchdowns. Absolutely nothing against the guy. I'm not saying he's not God mode because he's not that good. I'm saying he's not going to be God mode because he's competing with two other guys who are almost just as good as him. This hat really makes me sound like a Bengals fan right now. He's going to be elite though. And if he doesn't miss time, he'll have more yards than he had last year. And that brings us to T Higgins. 1,100 yards and five touchdowns. He is so good. Like there's two kinds of people in this world. People who think he's overrated or that he's underrated. I think he's underrated. The guy's like 6'4". And he's had consistent receptions at 74 over the last two years with or without Jamar Chase. So it leads me to believe he will be consistent. And finishing up the Bengals, we got Tyler Boyd. 750 yards, four touchdowns. That's pretty similar to what he's done every year in the league. And it's pretty similar to what he's done every year since he's become the number three on that team. This guy will do whatever you need him to. And that includes letting other people get reps over him. I don't think he really cares. He's just winning, bro. All right, so now before we skip to the Broncos, I just want to let you guys know I tweaked the tier list. I had the yardage a little bit messed up here, so it's slightly different if you notice. Anyway, now we're on to Cortland Sutton. 730 yards, three touchdowns. He's been a guy that everyone's been like, oh, he's really good. And he didn't do that good, and then he didn't do that good, and then he didn't do that good to the point where I don't believe he's really anything special. He's going to make a significantly good catch once every six weeks and then dip. After him, we've got Jerry Judy, 1,150 yards and eight touchdowns. This is going to be the year of Scary Jerry. I believe Jerry's always had the talent to be good. I just believe he's been in a really, really 
horseshit predicament, honestly, for the last, what, three years that he's been in the league. Now we've got Allen Robinson. Woo! Go 580 yards, two touchdowns. I believe he is a bum, and I believe I was a clown for overrating him. Do I believe he could do better with the Steelers than he did with the Rams? Yes, I do, but I don't believe he is any better than George Pickens or Deontay Johnson. A matter of fact, I think he is worse. After A-Rob, we move on to Deontay Johnson. 860 yards, three touchdowns. Look, he didn't catch a touchdown last year. I don't think that's going to happen again, but I don't think he's going to go back to the 1,000-yard receiving Deontay Johnson again either. And even though his picture's not here, I do also have a prediction for George Pickens. I think he'll catch for 875 and seven touchdowns. He'll have a decent year, but again, I don't know how high I can predict his yardage. All right, now moving on to the Eagles, we got A.J. Brown. I got him at 1,100 yards and 13 touchdowns. I think he's fantastic. He's a top 10 receiver. I just don't think he's going to throw up 14 or 1,500 again, especially because I'm going to have Devontae Smith having a good year. Like, it's just going to take a little bit of his yards away, but it's not a knock at all. Now, moving on to Devontae Smith. 1,250 receiving yards, but only eight touchdowns. They were figuring it out last year. They know that he is an elite, speedy, deep threat. I think that's what's going to get him more yardage, maybe some more looks, but AJ's muscle is going to continue to be the reason that he is the highest scorer on that team. Well, for receivers anyway, I should say. He's, he's, he's too physical. He's too fast. He's too violent in the end zone to take down or get the ball away from. They're both going to be electric. All right, now moving on to the Dallas receivers. We got Brandon Cooks. I got him at 925 for five touchdowns. He's a really good receiver, and he finally got out of Houston, which he very much needed to do. But I don't think he'll hit 1,000 again, not behind CD and competing with Gallup. Now, moving on to CD Lamb. 1,320 yards, 10 touchdowns, God mode. Look, he almost hit 1,400 last year, and you know, I would take some yardage away from him considering Brandon Cooks is probably going to get some extra looks, but you got to understand, Dak Prescott, in my head, is not going to be the Dak from last year. He's going to be the Dak that we've had when he was a healthy, actual good quarterback. Therefore, CD is going to get a lot more quality throws, and his yardage is going to remain very high. Now we're on to Chris Godwin. I'll go like 900 yards on the ball, six touchdowns. He's a great receiver, but his quarterback isn't Tom Brady anymore. It's Baker Mayfield, as long as Baker Mayfield can hold on to that job. He'll be as good as the team allows him to be. After that, we've got Mike Evans. We'll go 1,010 yards, eight touchdowns. I'll give him slightly over, you know, the 1,000 bump because it's Mike Evans. He's never not gotten 1,000, but I believe it's going to be right around it because once again, his quarterback isn't Tom Brady. It's not Jameis Winston who can huck the ball a mile. It's Baker. Now flipping to Seattle, we got Tyler Lockett. We'll go 950 for five touchdowns. I think he drops a little bit because of Jackson Smith. After Lockett, we got DK. DK, I do believe, will hit about a thousand on the balls, just like Mike Evans. Maybe we'll go a thousand twenty-five. I'm only gonna give him like five touchdowns though, just because of Lockett, Jackson, and Kenneth Walker. As far as Jackson Smith goes, there is no picture for him, but I'd pick him at about 750 yards, four touchdowns. All right, now we got Christian Kirk, 950 for seven touchdowns. He'll be all right, but he ain't gonna be the number one receiver anymore, so I think he'll drop some yardage. After him, we've got the new number one in Jacksonville, if you're asking me, and that's Kelvin Ridley. I can't be too ridiculous. I think he's gonna go to the moon, but I'll just say uh, 1,130 yards, seven touchdowns. He's either going to come back and be terrible or he's going to come back and everyone's going to go, I forgot how good he was. And I think it's option number two. After Calvin, we've got Hollywood. 800 yards, three touchdowns. Arizona's a mess. I mean, he's good, but he's not going to be very good without Kyler. I mean, I think Colt McCoy is going to be the starter, right? He ain't special. After Hollywood, we've got D-Hop. This one I have highlighted because I expect drama. I don't expect his season to be entirely complete because there'll either be a section where he gets traded and misses a little bit of time or a section where he gets fed up and sits out until he gets traded. I got him finishing with about 960 for six touchdowns. That brings us to Hunter Renfro. 600 yards, three touchdowns. I think his Lynn Sanity run is over. That brings us to Devontae Adams. 1,275 yards, nine touchdowns. He's going to have a little bit of a descend because, again, the quarterback isn't as good there. Should have kept Derek Carr, man. Devontae is going to be good. He's always going to be good, but I think he will miss God mode because of it. Okay, Jacoby Myers, 7-10, four touchdowns. He'll be Jacoby Myers. Now we're on to the whole effing show, Stefan Diggs. He'll hit right around 1,200 as well. I'll say 1,200 on the balls and eight touchdowns. Look, Stefan Diggs, one of the best receivers in the game, but he's gonna have a little bit of a descend as well. His division cornerbacks are 
Fuck. Toss Gardner, Jalen Ramsey, Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, have fun. And now we'll go to OBJ. 850 for uh, three touchdowns. I think you'll get the Rams OBJ and he'll make some great plays, but he's not going to be a stat pattern and he is going to miss time naturally. And now we got Cooper Cup, the comeback kid. I expect a good year, but I don't think he'll go God mode either. I think he'll be uh, around 1,125 yards and uh, 10 touchdowns still. Cooper Cup and Matt Stafford on a very bad team. Like, I mean, they'll do what they can. All right, still going now. We got Terry McLaurin. 1,045 yards, four touchdowns. Gotta believe, too, statistically, Terry always breaks a grand. Doesn't matter who's throwing him the ball, but with Sam Howell, I just don't think it's gonna be a magical year by any means. I, th I think he'll do just what Terry does. After Terry, we've got Amari Cooper. I think he's gonna have a great year. He's just gonna miss 1,200. He'll go like 1,180 yards, and he'll have seven touchdowns on top of it. Amari Cooper has been so slept on and, like, wiped under the rug. He's always literally been a good receiver. All right, now we're on to Debo. I got 875 for six touchdowns. Look, he'll have rushing yards on that. He'll break a thousand all-purpose yards, but they paid way too much for a guy that they're probably never going to get again. He's fantastic, but naturally he's going to miss some time too. Now we got Brandon Ayuk, right around 1,100 yards and nine touchdowns. I'll say uh, 1,120 just to break it. He's going to lead the team in receiving unless I have Kittle going over that, but I don't think I will because Kittle's going to miss some time too. I love Brandon Ayuk. And I think his time is is really about to shine. Now we get Amon Ross St. Brown. 1,050 yards and eight touchdowns. I have his yards dropping a little bit because I believe that they're going to be really run heavy and they have Marvin Jones who is good and they're gonna have Jamison Williams coming back after like what, week nine? DJ Moore. 950 yards, five touchdowns. It'll be a good year. It's just uh, Chicago, you know, a little bit of a shaky system at the moment in time. Not quite sure what the demand is going to be with him. Juju Smith-Schuster, 760 yards, four touchdowns. I think he's taking the role of Jacoby Myers. And that'll bring us to Justin Jefferson. He is going to break the all-time receiving record with 2,020 yards, as well as recording 10 touchdowns. It is going to be God mode. He's the best receiver in the game, and the reason I picked 2020 is because it's the year he was drafted. If he doesn't get 2020, then he's going to finish with 1999, because that'll still break the record, and that's the year he was born. All right, now we're on to Jalen Waddle, a guy I just talked about on Twitch yesterday. I think he's arguably in the bubble for top five. 1,230 yards, seven touchdowns. Don't think he'll keep up with what he had exactly last year, because that was a ton, especially with Tyreek, but it'll be a lot. Now we've got Tyreek. He'll go 1,450 yards, nine touchdowns. Absolutely God mode. It's Tyreek. Is anybody going to argue that? Like, who has an argument against it? The guy will turn a five receiving yard play into like a 90 receiving yard play. Mike Williams, 820 yards, eight touchdowns. Great receiver, but he's going to be hurt and it's going to be spread out because they added Johnston. Keenan Allen, 850 yards, three touchdowns. Now, the reason I got him being that low too, one, he's getting older, he's gonna miss time, and for two, you've got Williams, you've got Johnston, you've got Eckler who catches, and I think they still have Everett. Like, they've just got so much to go around. Garrett Wilson will go 1,240 yards, seven touchdowns. He put up 1,000 yards with literal ass cans throwing him the ball. He has Aaron Rodgers now. Michael Pittman, 820 yards, three touchdowns. It's gonna be a rough year for anybody who is receiving the ball in Indianapolis. It's gonna be a rough year to be a Colt in general. And then we got Adam Thielen. He'll go 750 yards and six touchdowns. He's gonna get hurt, he's gonna miss time. He'll be a touchdown machine, but guy's like 33, man. And then ending, we've got three guys who I just didn't even really put time into. We got uh, Devontae Parker, Jarvis, and Julio. Devontae will catch 630 yards for two touchdowns. Jarvis will go 400 for one touchdown. And Julio, if he plays, he's going to come back very late for a playoff push, I imagine. I got him at about 500 yards and we'll go four touchdowns. But that is it, guys, for me predicting the stats for NFL wide receivers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and obviously running backs are going to come next. However, that is going to be all I got for today's video in general, though. So if you guys want to show support to this video, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. I try to post every single day. With everything I just said, I'm going to hop off and get this edited so you guys can watch it on time. Have a great rest of your week. And as always, I will see you in the next video.